We have this amazing workshop today on levels of friendship, and we have Karen D. Uh, I believe she's from Nevada, but she'll be, she'll be able to tell us. And she's here, and I'm going to turn it over to her because I have the giggles now. All right. <laughs> uh, take it away, Karen. Hey, thank you so much. My name is Karen. I'm from Lake Tahoe. I've been in CODA for six, six plus years. I have a sponsor, I am a sponsor, I have a home group, I have service positions all over the place because I love this program. It's changed really everything, absolutely everything for me. And I initially thought codependent sounded really weak and wimpy and stuff and oh, I'm relying on somebody else. And it turns out that codependence is teaching me how to get along with everybody in the world. It's not just about a single relationship. So that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm going to start off by reading something from the Common Threads of Codependency. We have some really neat pamphlets in CODA and the Common Threads of Codependency. If you're new, definitely you want to get this one so you'll feel like you fit in. So I'm going to read this for you real quick. We have repeatedly sought out relationships to boost our egos, to confirm our identities, and to make us feel good about ourselves. In order to be authentic, we cannot use other people to define who we are and to fulfill us. By recognizing our true value, we can stop neglecting and mistreating ourselves. To be true to ourselves, we look inside to find our answers. We discover within ourselves a sense of security and self-worth, not bound by anyone else's opinion of us. Somewhere along the line, we learn to doubt our perceptions, discount our feelings, and overlook our needs. Telling people what we thought or felt often resulted in our being ignored, laughed at, or punished. We looked to others to tell us what to think, what to feel, how to behave. In this way, other people supplied us information about who we were and who we should be. They define us and our view of the world, and we may have accepted that as reality. It became more important to be compliant than to be authentic and we adopted rigid beliefs about what we should be. We believed that if we could just get it right, everything would be okay. Okay, my first slide, please. Or is that for me? Bong. There we go. <clears throat> and here's what we're gonna be talking about today, levels of friendship. There are, believe it or not, various levels of friendship. Not everybody is a good, good buddy. Not everybody gets to be drawn into that circle of trust, you know. Um, while we're doing this, if you have a question, put your little blue hand up. Um, we'd love to have questions, and we're going to have sharing afterwards as well. But I will take questions at any time. And <clears throat> so go ahead and take a look over this for real quick, and then we're going to talk about each level one at a time. You'll notice that there aren't any zeros, which is weird, but that tells me that everybody on the planet is at least a one. There are no zeros, there is no cutting anybody out of your life altogether. Everybody is a one. All relationships start at the number one superficial level. So what I'd like you to do today is take, pick somebody in your life that's very close to you. Could be a family member, could be a husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, whatever. And take that person and start them at the level one and then move them up, see how far they can, how far they can go, how far they belong. Most relationships will remain here. 98% of your relationships are superficial. Uh, that's not bad. It's not a bad thing. Each one of these levels is its own, it's its own um, relationship in its own right. And it's not bad. Just because somebody's at a one, that's not a that's not negative. That's just where they belong. That's all. Each level is a unique relationship and each level can be a healthy relationship. It is never the goal to move people forward. Each person will drop into a category depending on their behaviors. The, I had this backwards my whole life. When I would meet somebody, I'd bring them all the way in, tell them all about myself. Uh, whether they wanted to know that or not, it didn't matter. I just wanted them to understand me, get to know me, be sympathetic towards me. And then if they listened, then I would consider them a good friend. It was a, a, it was a good, tight friendship. But that's actually not the way this works. And Coda told me I was doing this wrong. 
Can I have the next screen, please? <clears throat> Superficial. A formal public relationship with all the people in the entire world. People you haven't even met yet are superficial. The bank teller, the mail carrier, we engage in courteous communication on neutral topics. No exchange, no obligations. We are considering having this relationship move forward. We begin to observe and evaluate the person. Most people will stay here. You don't need to pull them in. You don't, you don't need to know about yourself. You don't need to form what you consider a bond because it's, it's superficial, it's not real. So think about that one person in your life that uh, you, you're sharing this um, very close relationship and see if they belong here. <clears throat> Everybody does belong here to start with, but we're gonna see if we can move them forward gradually. Next slide, please. Casual and familiar. This is a lot of people, people at work, people at, uh, in your programs, things like this that you have a little bit more contact with. Sorry about my frog, we have pollen up here. This relationship is based on common ground, such as work, school, 12-step programs. This is a crucial stage for determining whether to move this person forward. This is somebody that you're around a little bit more than the superficial people. At work, you're spending hours a day with somebody. You don't have to move them into a closer relationship or a friendlier relationship with you. A casual and familiar relationship is just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to share basic information about yourself and see what they do with it. Do they go tell everybody? You know, this is a, this is a really simple step to have people remain and just stay right there for a long time. This isn't a, a one week process. If you're going to move somebody forward, this takes months and months. Share basic, basic information about yourself and nothing personal at all at this point. Look for and don't dismiss or excuse red flags. Oh man, how many red flags have I seen in my life? How? It's amazing to me how many red flags I discounted and just said, well, um, ah, here we have someone. I've, uh, we have a question in the chat. It says, I've had to remove folks from my life completely based on their repeated abusive behavior. Wouldn't that qualify as a zero? No, I'm sorry, it qualifies as a one. Would you flip back to one for us, please? A formal public relationship. We engage in courteous communication when necessary. You don't have to, but the only communications we do have with people is on neutral, neutral topics. If you do go around your folks, talk about the weather. Never politics, religion, your previous you know, uh, history with them, anything like that. Uh, if no expectations, that's important, especially because of what you just said. You have history with these people, obviously. You know who they are. They're never going to move forward. Really, so, you know, if you've already had um, repeated abuse, you know that they belong in a superficial area. There are no obligations, no ex obligations from you to them or from them to you. No expectations. You don't expect them to automatically get cured no matter how many times they say it. Okay, that is, uh, ah, sadly they are my son and daughter. I'm so sorry to hear that, Carol. Yeah, most of my family is in two. Is it a number two? Most of my family. It's casual, familiar. I'm related to them. You can't dump them all together. You can't never see them again or cut them out of your life. That's not, you know, it's just not, um, not what you do, I guess. But this relationship is based on common ground, such as work, school, 12-step program. Now, with your son and daughter, the way they've abused you before, they actually belong in a one. Okay, they belong in the category one, no expectations, no obligations, neutral topics until they grow up. You know, they're, uh, I don't know what their age there are, but they're going to have to make themselves more trustworthy to you before they can move even into a two. But it's okay if they're a one. Okay, sorry you had that experience. So casual and familiar. Oh, wow. 
Son is 55, daughter is 53. Well, looks like they're going to stay a number one forever if they don't get in recovery. Not everybody gets well. How many people do you know in the world that you would consider healthy people? There's not that many. Uh, for me, I had to, to become a drunken, useless idiot to get forced into AA. I had no other choice. It was either do that or die. Worked those 12 steps and then got into code and worked these 12 steps. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I could say that I've done a 180 in all of my perceptions and all my life. If they don't get themselves healed, they're number one. They, they can't get that close to you. Don't let them in. And I'm sorry to say that. I know that um, God bless you too. I'm sorry to say that, but this is okay. If they're going to stay in a one for the rest of their lives, that's okay. It's okay. Um, kind of sad, but okay. Look for and don't dismiss or excuse red flags. Man, I excuse such bad behavior. Good grief. When I reflect on that now and think about it, it makes me laugh, but then it also makes me cry a little bit. I go, wow, they should teach CODA in fourth grade. No later than fourth grade, <laughs> in my opinion, or at very least in high school. You know, get some sort of um, uh, education behind you as to how to have a relationship. Uh, with kids, by the way, with kids that are like 18 and under that, are, that aren't adults, none of these things are, are going to fit. Don't put them into any category yet because they aren't adult enough to show you who they really are. They're volatile. They're, up, you know, they're all over the map. So this doesn't actually work for children that are young. How do they treat animals? No, I, I, I dismissed that red flag one time. How do they talk about their ex? Do they complain a lot? Everybody's picking on them. My boss hates me. Everybody's mean to me. I'm not being treated fairly. How do they treat their mother? This is a big one, especially for men. I, I don't know why that is, but if men talk badly about their mothers, they're not gonna be nice to you either. Are they a victim? Do they criticize you? Just little ones, because at first, remember, you're meeting their representatives. Okay, they're not showing you who they really are. Do they try to fix you? Or worse, do they try to conform to you? That is also a negative. Remember, so far you've only met their representative, the person they want you to think they are. And it takes about 90 days, as I understand it, about three months for people to drop their guard and show themselves. So you gotta wait for it. You know, wait at least three months. That's a long time, it seems like, to move somebody up from a casual relationship but it will pay off. They're gonna show you who they are at some point and you're gonna be grateful when they do because now that you're in CODA, you're gonna say, ooh, that, I think that's a red flag. Go call your sponsor, check with your higher power, ask somebody else what to do because now you're in instinctive area. You're in an instinctual area where you're going to dismiss their bad behavior. And it's going to be okay. He just hasn't had the love of, a, of the right woman. He hasn't been loved correctly. Uh, this goes both ways, men and women. Uh, and if you get locked into that, you can put up with anything. Ah, oh, man, I used to drag guys behind me a lot. It, was, it seemed like I was trying to be their higher power because if they needed me, then they wouldn't leave. Well, they left. Anyway, after you know me spending a whole lot of money on them and putting them through tech school, things like this, because, you know, it, it's just going to be a matter of time and then everything will be okay. If you get caught in that when and then thinking, when this happens, then everything will be okay. That's fake. It's a lie. You can't judge the future. It hasn't happened yet. So give it that 90 days, give it at least 90 days to even consider moving them forward they got to stay in casual familiar for quite some time. And honestly, you don't have to move them forward from here. This is a good relationship. Uh, you treat, you know, you talk to them about uh, the weather and a little bit more and talk about work, talk about your 12 step program. And it's a bonding relationship, but it's based on that common ground. Can I have the next slide, please? Now we're getting into something special. 
Three is companionship. Now they've already worked through one and two. Don't skip those. What? <laughs> I just want somebody to do a huge yawn. Sorry, dear. Uh, steps one and two. Got to go through those first. And if they don't qualify to move, don't move them. Number three is companionship. And this is a common interest that brings you together, like, like ski buddies, movie buddies, or, or something like that. You belong to a knitting club, I don't know, a uh, bridge club, all these things. Okay, the event or activity is the bond, as opposed to the kind of person they are. This is a good time to get to know each other during this time. These people have proven themselves safe with basic information. So share something personal and observe if the conversation flows both ways. This is important. I used to just let my heart out as soon as I would meet somebody, tell them everything about myself, Nate, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I thought because they didn't stop me and say, stop talking, you're an idiot, that they liked me. And this was gonna be a good relationship. And it was, okay, well, we had, good, this is a green light. And it was actually not that way at all. Share some basic, inf they're, they're safe with basic information, share something personal, not deeply personal folks don't give them the big bomb yet we all have a big bomb a little big secret that we're not going to let somebody know that we only talk to our sponsor about some things that are there in your life that you only talk to your sponsor about you know the, you don't need to nobody needs to know that stuff and especially not a companionship at this point you're just palling around don't move people forward until they have exhibited safe behaviors if they don't, keep them here. Enjoy the casual relationship. This is a good one. You know, you're talking about, you can talk about more. There's personal things going on. Talk about your relationships, things like that. But you still don't get into the heart of who you really are at this point. It's just, you know, chat, chat, chat. Um, this is a really, really good relationship to have. And don't forget, if you have a question, type it in the chat box or raise your little blue hand. It's fine. Uh, next slide, please. So when narcissistic abuse, you are advised no contact, but I, but I guess still a one because every person should be recognized as a person, even if they're toxic. Do you agree? I do. A one is a great relationship for narcissists. If you are not smart enough to run in the opposite, opposite direction when you meet one, then just keep them in a one. You might be working for one. You might be, there might be somebody in your family that's a narcissist. Those people, believe me, don't ever leave, number one, not ever, because they're very, very self-involved and they're dangerous on a weird level. That, And also, you can move people up and down this scale, okay? Somebody might impress you and look like they're going to be a three, and then all of a sudden, they show you who they are. Oops, they're a two, and they can stay there. That's fine. They don't have to move forward or backward or anything. So we've got, let's see. Uh, and we will be timing this too, so uh, please respect our timer. Okay. She says, what if someone else exhibits those behaviors? Do I tell them what I see or just step away? The CODA program tells me I'm not allowed to change anybody. I can't change anybody, number one, and, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't try to do that because you can manipulate somebody to go along with what you want briefly briefly but it's temporary and it doesn't last and it's not real they're just trying to make you happy so you'll shut up or something but yeah that's uh, you can tell them confront them set a boundary do whatever you can in a healthy coda way but if that doesn't work you know move them back just move them back and all very good questions to ask about others this is from carol how about turning that mirror around as a form of self-reflection? I see these questions as good and helpful for us to ask them first and foremost about ourselves. Hence, a good way to assess if we're ready to be in and have a healthy re uh, relationship. That's absolutely true, and that's what the CODA program is for. If you haven't worked all of the 12 steps with a sponsor in a row, just like it says to do, you're not qualified to have a relationship. I'm sorry. You're just not ready. There's, there are things once you get all the way through the 12 steps, you will have had a spiritual awakening. Like John was saying a minute ago, I had to move people back that I had way forward because they didn't belong there. And once you recognize and become a healthy person, number one, you're not going to attract those people anymore. 
they're, you're, they're not the same. They're not in your category, kind of. I'm not sure how that works, but there's some sort of a radar sonar thing comes along and, and unhealthy people don't approach me anymore. So, which is good. That's really, you know, that's really good. Um, also from Carol, I've often joked that marriage should be outlawed for people in their 20s. Oh gosh, so absolutely true. <laughs> for learning about ourselves, others, and the world in general, i.e. beyond our family of origin. Hallelujah. That is so true, Carol. I wish it was absolutely outlawed. I think you get smart right around 30. Right around 30, if you work at it. You know, I, I stayed dumb until I got into Dakota, so that's my story. But you don't have to do that. I've never. This is for Maria. Karen, would you say that these levels of friendship go with age and phases in life? It seems as one gets older, there are more casual and superficial relationships. Absolutely, because you're smarter. You know, you, you've had more bad experiences and good experiences. You know what it's supposed to feel like, especially if you've done the work in CODA, you know what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like. And, you know, all those red flags, that, that I mentioned and that John talked about and that everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about, you pay attention to those and you go, thank you for showing me who you are. All right, you're a one, you know. So you don't really, the, the relationships that you're gonna have absolutely are gonna be healthier. If you don't have CODA, I think people just get lazy and drop into relationships and nobody really, you know, teenage relationships and 20s relationships seem so chaotic and so meaningful and forceful. You know, when you're older, you're just, yeah, you're okay. I guess you can hang around. Let's see. If you have time to answer a question at any point, and if it doesn't come up, you've spoken about assessing moving people up. How do you go about moving people down levels? For example, after a relationship breakup. It's a really good time to do a post-mortem after a relationship breaks up and find out where you had them and where they should have been. Uh, they, it's a really, really good way to See, okay, where did I go wrong here? Why did I move them up so fast? What were the red flags that I ignored? Um, what are you telling yourself about this person so that you can accept them into your life? It's, um, we, we do some really crazy, unhealthy people do some crazy things with relationships and make it okay. The whole object, it seemed like, was to make it okay in your head. And I can really rationalize a lot of weird stuff, but you don't have to. To move a person back, absolutely move them back. If you are on level four and they just busted what you told them as something personal, then they're obviously a three. You don't have to announce it or send a card or anything, but they're a three. You know, that's it. They don't need to know. And that's an email. That's a, when do you share your story with a friend? Yeah, that's coming up. But it takes a long time to get there. Did I miss screen three? Go ahead and go back to three, please. I think Sheila wants to see that one. So close, there we go. There you go, Bria. And I can use these, oh, I can use these levels with people outside of 12 steps. But in CODA meetings, I share my story and my ESH, Experience, Strength, and Hope. So I automatically am sharing information that is much deeper than I would at me, let me see, where am I lost here? Would ever share with someone I meet outside the fellowship. It may contain personal private information about my real thoughts, feelings, behaviors. This feels in contrast to the levels. So I feel confused. Thank you for your info. Yeah, CODA is the safest room in the world is a CODA meeting because we're all trying to get well and we're all trying to get healthy and we're not in competition with each other. We're not comparing ourselves to each other. It's the safest place to do this. However, there is a limit to what you should share in the meeting. There are some private things that happen to children when you're children that should be shared with your sponsor or with the counselor. So in the meetings, you should share experience, strength, and hope that everybody can relate to. That's, the way, that's kind of the way I see it, the way I feel about it, because we're trying to help each other. But if it's um, bigger than that, if it's uh, like if you were molested as a child, that doesn't belong in a regular meeting. That's my opinion, but I think I'm right. Okay, any more hands up? Um, uh, yeah, um, Jackie H. from Phoenix, or Jax, I love her. What does 
that look like when you move a friendship back down a level without telling them that I'm going to do that? Won't they notice the loss and continue to reach out for the former connection? Good question. That's when you really look for the red flags. There's, um, when, you, when you move somebody around in CODA and you start, start getting healthier, people are going to have to adjust to the new you, not the, not the other way around. Uh, my family had to adjust to me putting boundaries up for a change. And they have. They've adjusted. But you don't have to tell somebody, you know what, you just dropped a level, pal. You know, that's for you. That's for you to know. But they will probably figure it out because you're not as available as you were. That's okay. They, that's their stuff. They're going to have to work that out for themselves. Tell them, go get a sponsor of any kind. You know, if you're a drinker, go, go, to, go to AA. Can you do Okay. Very good. So. Okay, um, Luciana, mm -hmm. oh, wait. I, I'm getting all the questions here. Uh, cool. Oh, Linda says, keep going with the chat so we, we won't have to edit it out. So um, we're only doing chat. You can chat with me, Jer, or Karen. The Bishop of Boundaries uh, is Jeremiah. Okay. okay, Luciano from Toronto said, my CODA meeting is not the safest place. Principles before personalities is not being respected. Mm -hmm. All right. In that case, you're getting a good example of a, a red flag. Okay, it's not safe in here. So I'm going to talk to my sponsor only about the things that are personal. Because we're just now, we're in companionship already. We're number three, and it's taken a long time to get here. And now we're sharing personal information, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Personal information that could be, you know, um, it's almost public knowledge, but it's a little bit more about you, not the whole banana. Don't, you don't give that to them right away. They don't need it. And they probably don't want it. Um, you know, who needs to know everything about you? Send it out. What was the name of the CODA pamphlet? Uh oh, uh -oh. it is Common Threads of Codependency common threads of codependency. It's a really good one. Jenna said, how do I deal with someone who wants to open up to me and tell me their story when I'm not available? Okay, number three again, please. Actually, let's go back to number two. Number two look for and don't dismiss or excuse red flags. How do they treat animals? How do they talk about their ex? Do they complain a lot? Are they a victim? Do they criticize you? Do they try to conform to you? This is a place where the, the people that just want to ruminate are going to be right here. They're the ones that want to talk about all the damage that's been done over and over and over. As long as you're willing to listen. As soon as you draw that boundary, they'll find a new victim. Don't worry, they'll find a new victim to, to talk to about this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can back them up. Uh, stage uh, casual familiar is really uh, advised for that type of a person. Uh, it, number one, they're a bummer, you know? You don't need to be brought down all the time by some because they're not trying to work on it. They just want to talk about it, okay? And let's go to three again, please. Okay. Get to know each other during this time. These people have proven themselves safe with basic information. So share something personal and observe if the conversation flows both ways. Just a little tidbit, just a little morsel, just see how it goes. See if they've had the same experience or want to talk on the same level that you're talking. Do not move people forward until they've exhibited, exhibited safe behaviors. I, I was always in a rush to get people right into the circle of trust. And they didn't belong there. If they don't exhibit safe behaviors, keep them here and enjoy a casual relationship. This is a really good one. This is my ski buddy. Wow, we go out and spend the whole day together. Not my best friend. This is my buddy, you know, and that's okay. Uh, number four, please. Okay. Number four is a big one. Now they've gone through steps one, two, and three. Now they're qualified. If so far they've had a little bit of personal information, not much, but just a little bit. Now we're getting into a partnership. 
This might be where your sponsor should sit. A partnership between two people who like and value each other equally. If you're not dealing with somebody that's healthy, you can't get there. If you've got healthy up here, not healthy down here, you're never gonna, unless they're working on themselves, you're not gonna get that balance. Try to find somebody equal in um, recovery with you. These people have shown the healthy behaviors you look for in the first three types of relationships. They have proven themselves trustworthy with personal information. So you can, if you choose, but you don't have to, risk sharing some private information with them. You spend more, with, you spend more time, I think, with this person, and it feels closer from all other people you know. Keep most good friends here. You're not gonna have a ton of people in here. Remember, 98% of the people you know are number one. So just kind of get that in mind when you're going through this. Not that many people make it to number four. This is a hard one and it takes a long time. It's, I used to, gosh, I had this whole thing backwards. I was never interested if I liked him or, uh, or yeah, if I, uh, what kind of a person he was that was not even on the radar. If they showed interest in me, I was eyeballing them, sizing them up for a tux. You know, that's all it took. So these people have shown the healthy behaviors you look for. You're gonna to wanna to either look for somebody that was raised healthy or has a program, has a good program. My boyfriend was raised healthy. It still startles me when I, when I see him playing with his grandkids and things like that. I go, God, that would have been fun when I was a kid. But when, you know, we, we would get a um, toy or something and they would say, okay, go play with this. Go, go, go away and play with this. Instead of he gets down on the floor with them and plays. That's a big difference. In his family, when he was raised, if he did something wrong, there were consequences for sure. But he didn't get consequences if he didn't do something wrong. I was raised in a very volatile atmosphere where you never really knew what was coming up. You just could never tell. So they've proven, proven themselves with trustworthy, with personal information. Your sponsor is going to fit in here somewhere your sponsor, if they're not a number four to you at some point, get a different sponsor. Okay, if you're not trusting them enough to tell them who you really are and what's really happened with you, how are they gonna help you? You know, if you keep big chunks of private stuff in, how are they gonna help you get well? How are they gonna know when you're doing the same thing you used to do? But <laughs> my poor sponsors, honestly. I had one that um, when I was one year sober, and I met my sponsor on the beach and I told her I had a great idea. I'd come up with a great idea. And she's like, oi, I can just, you know, see it on her. She puts that smile on her face, you know, that frozen smile, here we go. And I told her that I had decided to have a sex buddy because I had been approached by this guy and I seemed like a good idea and then I wouldn't be lonely, blah, blah, blah. And she said, huh, well, you know, next time you have a good idea, just let it go. Just, just let it go. And then she sat me down. She opened it up to page 69, which talks about sex. Why don't you go ahead and read this? And then we'll talk about it again, which means no, okay, just in case, you know, in case you're wondering how this went. That's a big no. But sponsors are very, very healthy. She knew my past. She knew that that's exactly what I used to do. So how is she going to help me if she doesn't know that? And number five. This is something else. This is a mutually deep friendship. It has to come from both sides. When you're thinking about that person that I asked you to think about initially, the one that's really, really close to you, think about them for a second. Is this mutual? Are they as interested in me as I am in them? Do they ask me how my day was or did they just talk about their day? Things like this, are you getting that equalness? Do they care about you at all? And, my boyfriend is fantastic when I come home, if I do, you know, bitch about something or blah, 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 and he'll say, oh, I'm sorry, that happened. And that's it. That's it. He won't try to fix me or anything. And that is marvelous. This is a mutually deep friendship with shared passions. He skis all day. He's 77 years old. He skis, I snowboard. I'm still working, so I snowboard on my days off. But he skis each and every day. He's just, he's just like that. 
This is mutually deep friendship with shared passions, trust, and respect. You should probably be in the same political party if you're going to be a number five. Just saying it. And for right now, this didn't used to matter, but the way things are in the world right now, you might want to be in the same political party if you can help it. Your sponsor will often fit in this group. When you discuss deeply private information, you know your privacy will be respected. Time spent together builds even more trust and respect. You can take bigger risks with each other. This is the stopping point for a select few close relationships. There aren't many people that are going to be here. Maybe three, maybe three. I can't even fill mine up with three. That's a sponsor should definitely be in here. If you can't tell your sponsor about yourself, you don't have the right sponsor. But my sponsor knows everything about me, everything. And I know that she would never release that information. I just know it because she's been through one, two, three, and four. So here we are. If your sponsor does, doesn't make it up to five, that's okay. You know, that's, you're still a little bit hesitant. That's for you to work on, not for them. Any more questions? No. Okay. And finally, number six. Committed partnership. I've been with my boyfriend for over 13 years. It took me five years to put him in, a, in this category, five years. That's how long it took me to put him in this category because I'm careful now, I'm looking now, I'm paying attention now because of CODA. It's a faithful, trustworthy, loving, and fearless relationship. Somebody asked me all the time, you, the, the, his son asked me, well, I can see why he's with you. Why are you with him? I said, because I'm fearless with him. I know he won't hurt me. I know he would never intentionally hurt me, ever. This person is so valuable, they have become an integral part of your daily life. You both share responsibility for the relationship and honor each other. One or two people at the most belong here. I only have one, Dave's in there and that's it. Both sharing the responsibility for the relationship is a big deal. I remember when I used to carry like 80% of it and then drag him behind me and hope to get the little morsels of, of you know, you'd, hey, that was neat or you did that right or a little bit of praise, anything, any morsel or crumb that would make me know, oh, he loves me, <clears throat> it's absolutely not true. But if you get all the way to a six with this person, then you've got it. But this is a long, long, long time for me. It took five years. Do we have questions at this point? Hmm. My internet connection is unstable. Huh. We do have a hand. Um, and that's Jer, uh, the bishop. Yes. Uh, the bishop is going to. Yeah. Hi, Rona. Where's Rona? Hi. She I'm here. Run. Hi. I'm Rona Codependent. Oh, Hi. Yeah, it's nice to um, see you. I'm muted too quickly. I wanted to ask them, what do you do with all that excess energy then? Because I assume I'm directing like tons of excess energy towards relationships that actually should remain superficial. That's what's making me think of. <laughs> I <laughs> expect to have like an intimate encounter with a news agent, you know, like, yeah. That is such a great question. I spent a lot of energy on my past relationships. I spent a lot of energy and time and trying to manipulate and figure out how to make this work and how to make this relationship seem like a good one because it's obviously, it's kind of not, I don't know, there's something wrong here, so I'd have to make this okay in my head. It was a full-time gig. Why isn't he calling me? You know, all that stuff. I don't have to do that anymore because everybody's way out there. There's very few people for me that, that come in. And once they do, if they're, that's when they are, they're moving up and back depending on if I can trust them or not. And I've had, you know, honestly, I've had people that were up to a three that, um, that I've known for 15 years and she dumped me because we are in different um, um, political parties. She said she couldn't, uh, she couldn't talk to me anymore. So, okay, that's, what are you gonna do? So I moved her back to a one, that's all. It doesn't have to be a big dramatic, oh my God, you're a one now. One is fine, one's a good relationship. Thanks. Got some more raised hands. 
All right. Thanks, Ro. So good to see you. Um, love you. Um, Tiana T, uh, where should one's father and mother fall in these categories? For example, I have a great relationship with my father and will consider him a five or a six. My relationship with my mother is evolving as I work my steps. Should I strive to eventually make them both mm -hmm. a number six? That's really great. That's a good question because the problems that we had growing up and the problems that we've had with relationships, that's for us to fix. And when we get healthy and start working past this stuff and, and get rid of all the junk, then your parents, you just recognize them as adults. They're just, you know, that the mother father relationship gives way to just adults rather than the, the people that harmed me or, or whatever it was. A lot of it I made up in my own head. A lot of it I didn't. But uh, they're just people. They're, they're, my father has passed. My mother's a one. Sorry. You know, she's done some things that she can't be trusted. But one is fine. We get along perfectly. No, because of the boundaries I've drawn. Sure. Thank you, Kayla. That's a good question. And the way you can do that is to stop beating yourself up. I've spent my whole life beating myself up. You're stupid. You're fat. You're this, you're that. And the only way you can come up with something like that is comparing yourself to other people. So start comparing yourself to yourself. Are you doing better than you used to be? Well, good. If you're not, go see your sponsor. As you go through these steps, try to speak to yourself nicer. It's not that I'm stupid. I just didn't know any better. I'm using the tools that I was brought up with. That's all I've got. Now that I'm learning new tools, I don't still go to sleep every once in a while, but I just didn't know any better. That's all. So keep that in mind to yourself. That's all it is. Chuck B. And then, well, before Chuck, I got a message asking, um, where do you think siblings should fit on this scale? It depends on the sibling. Uh, like I said, family members, obviously, something went wrong when we were being brought up or we wouldn't be in CODA, right? Didn't come in here on a winning streak. So your siblings might be part of the problem. Start them at a one. Start everybody at a one and go from there. See where they belong. They might just be a, end up being a two. I have a, one sister that's a two and everybody else is a one because she's working on herself. So, and so that's that one. Where would you put a, I have a couple questions that are coming through. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna have to go back here. Um, where would you put your, from um, Tara, where would you put your child? Mine is a four and a loving relationship. I feel it is at a level six. Is this healthy? Sure. Depending on how I'm going to know when they're 12, they're going to change on you. I don't know how old your, your child is, but kids remember are evolving and they get volatile and they change on you. Don't take that personally when they do. If you have them at a six, which you can't count on with the child because they don't know anything yet, when they do turn on you, you're going to be hurt. So I definitely take them back a notch. But you could do that as they present themselves as untrustworthy. You don't have to do it right away. Thanks for the workshop, which is very clarifying around the discussed levels. I would like to also acknowledge as a long-term member that from my experience, there is often a deep grieving process attached to much of this, which takes time and is different for everyone. So one does not simply go from understanding to acceptance. Yes, there needs to be space for emotional processing as well as logical recognition and the need for levels of boundaries and relationships. Great point. That is absolutely true. When you're sitting in that uncomfortability, uncomfortability, you should be talking to your sponsor. You know, you should be doing four steps and fifth steps. Back up a little bit. Why did I get caught in this relationship again? What did I miss? Which part of CODA did I miss that put me in that relationship? And that's a, that's a, yeah, it's a grieving process to let go of, of people that you thought were really trustworthy. You thought they were really good friends and, and you did. It's hard to let them go because it's, you know, you, you thought you had it right, but you really didn't. Can you put up the slide with six levels? There it is. Okay. And we've got raised hands. Yep. We have questions too. And then we have to think about maybe just like a five minute break. Sure. Yeah, let's okay. do that.
You want to you wanna do one of your questions, Christina, and then I'll do. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry, there's so many questions in here. Um, all right. My aunt said something so hurtful a while back. I put her on a three-month probation. I did <laughs> I didn't visit her for three months. It made me feel so good that I found a middle ground between sticking around for more hurt and dumping the relationship. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. It's, it, there's not just a level of relationship. Not everybody is going to be at the same level. You can spread them out. They can go back to a one until they can behave themselves. And if they never learn how to behave themselves, then they're a one. It's very simple. And it's a good one. One is not negative. It's not negative to be put into a one. That's just where they belong. That's all. Yeah. Good stuff. I, and so I was born very premature. I have always been looking for a soulmate, I guess, and recently got out of an abusive marriage. I'm new to CODA, but it's made me think, is that deep longing for a connection, something to do with being action and losing the other in the womb? You may or may not have thoughts on it. No, I don't think so. I think everybody out there is looking for that really close relationship, somebody they can share their lives with. I, I'm not a twin, so I can't speak on this with authority, but no, you're not alone. That's why we came to CODA. We, we've had relationships that just, we thought they were one thing and they were another thing. So this is, um, this is how we figure it all out. Go to CODA, do the 12 steps with the sponsor. And there's another one. Okay, hi Karen, did you use the Kodo Green Workbook to do the steps? You better believe it. I, uh, do you have any views on using Melody Be Beattie or other books? Sure, go ahead and read all, all the books you want. All this information is good stuff. I only use Kodo when I'm sponsoring though, and the Green Book is extremely helpful. Gives them homework. And the, when I used the workbook when I was going through the steps, I learned a lot about myself. It was amazing when you really, really Put yourself into this program you're going to get a lot back out and carol great workshop ah from england a lot of alcoholics were codependents before drinking as you mentioned yeah that's, that's why we drink too much that's why we drug too much that's why we do everything too much is we not only have that addictive nature but we're unhappy that's what we do to get that comfort you know i know what to do alcohol was a solution for me it wasn't a problem until it was I have a question here from uh, somebody is asking, have a set a boundary with a parent that treats them more like a friend rather than a daughter and overshares about everything and that this has been going on since childhood. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard with parents because it has been going on since childhood. And when you start to draw a boundary on these things, they'll up the ante. You know, the, well, I made you a bun. Okay, but I told you I was making hamburgers. They're never going to stop with your first level. So you're going to have to say it over and over. I really don't want to talk about that. How about we talk about this? And and just really, it's, it's, it's hard, but it can be done. It just takes a lot of guts. <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, there we go. And anyone else? Anything else? Because I could do this all day. <laughs> I love Coda. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions or comments, we can probably close the meeting and then just anybody who wants to share with anybody, that'll be okay. What do you think about that? Uh, no, well, yes, um, I have some here in my chat box. Okay. Oh, here we go. Can you share how you found self-love and stopped relating in a codependent way? Was the essence of this a relationship with your higher power? Thank you. Wow. Yeah. It, it, self-love is, is difficult because I, I talk so badly to myself and my sponsor kept telling me, don't, you know, don't beat yourself up. You just didn't know any better. So every time I would start berating myself or oh that was stupid I just didn't know any better I say it over and over and it takes time it does it's not it doesn't happen overnight it takes I, another three months I think it is to change your behaviors 
to where they're natural. But yeah, I just started telling myself, you just didn't know any better. It's not your, you know, it's a, you didn't do anything wrong here. Not your fault. Uh, and it did, it took a long time. And uh, yeah, and it took a, <clears throat> it took a, a, a boyfriend that finally I didn't have to prove anything to, I guess. I'm fearless with him. I'm, you know, that, that's a big deal for me. And let's see, I kind of like to get in touch with you, sure. Any tips on forgiveness? Uh-oh, I struggle with this, especially if I have a resentment. I, this, this is gonna be like code of 5.0, I think. Forgiveness for me is, I think that the forgiveness is for the person that, that's been harmed, not for the other person, because we're all out here in the world being ourselves, good, bad, or ugly. We have faults, everybody has faults. And there are just people out there that are saying stupid things and on an on a off day or something, we don't know what was behind it. So what is there to forgive? They're just being who they are. There's, there's nothing to forgive there. I, this is a little bit, you know, this is a little bit advanced for me. I, I just don't, I, forgiveness and me, we just don't don't match. It's, to me, it's be a lot uh, a lot of arrogance for me to think that I can forgive somebody for something they did because they just they're just being who they are. Move them back to a one. Everything's fine. That's your way to forgive. So, uh, right. let's see. Um, let's see. I have. <clears throat> I have to see my. Mind. All right, we did the, I've got so many in here. Um, can you guys, or can you all please uh, email Karen, or message Karen with your questions or your feedback because I, it's just kind of overwhelming me. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. Either Jeremiah or Karen, but um, I have, I put my family in number one. I rarely see them. When I recently accepted an invitation to see them, one sibling was offensive. I hadn't seen her for two years. I don't expect any better, but it's still uncomfortable. I don't want to get into any discussion or respond because it won't get me anywhere. But it didn't feel good to me to be on the receiving end and not do anything. Any advice on this, please? Thank you. Really appreciate this information. Yes, go home as an adult. They're just adults. They, you know, they're they're still your siblings and they're still your parents and things like that. But they're just adults. And and go as an observer. I did that as well one time, and, and I just sat back and observed how people dealt with each other and, and related to each other. It was amazing what uh, what was really revealed by that. So remember the drama tri triangle, don't get caught. You're not the victim, persecutor, or the rescuer. If you get caught in there, excuse yourself and the triangle will fall. But go as an adult. It's not easy, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. And good luck. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Okay, it doesn't seem okay for parents to use the one to six scale on their, scale on, on their children or really anyone's children until the child is an adult. My thought here is that you risk parentifying the child if you expect them to offer true friendship, intimacy, and committed partnership. I cringe when I hear my parent hear a parent say, my daughter's my best friend, as I know I'm looking at a grown woman who can't see them, who can't seem to get a grown woman friends and is putting too much on her kid. Can you clarify these important boundaries for the group? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a tricky one. Your daughter's going to keep evolving. I don't know how she, old she is at this point, but she's an adult now. She's going to get married, have her own kids, and you're going to be cut out. So, you know, you need to find your own relationships. This is hard. It's, we know what they talk about, empty nest syndrome. And I've watched it with my sister. I don't have any children. She had six. So there's balance in the universe, right? But she, when all of her kids left and had their own families, they want to spend families with, with Christmas with their families and not with you anymore. So latching onto that person as a, 
uh, uh, as your best friend as a six, that's, I don't think it's going to stay there. You're going to need to start moving her back. And remember that it's okay. She's an adult now. Your relationship is going to change. That's all. It's not going to go away. It's just going to change. Okay. And what qualifies us to label others as narcissists, sex addicts, etc.? Is it fair for us to do that? I think it is. I think we're protecting ourselves now. I think we're looking for red flags and we're looking for signs. A narcissist is easy to spot. Just read up, read up on the word just a little bit and you'll be able to see them. There's different levels, of course, of narcissism, but everybody has at least a little pinch of that. Uh, the, that it's all about me. Uh, I, had a, I had some myself, but a full-blown narcissist, it's easy to spot once you read about it and see what they really are. And you really won't, the healthier you get, they won't waste their time on you because you're not going to react like they want you to once you get healthy. Um, huh? Love your style. You shoot from the hip. <laughs> Clear, concise. Do you sponsor over the phone out of in Canada? Let's talk about that. Okay, from Linda. What someone has broken your trust and you forgive them and move them back to a one, can you slowly move them back up if their behavior warrants? Is it possible to repair trust that has been destroyed? Sure it is. That might have been just an anomaly. It, you know, we, we do stupid stuff. I, I've done some really stupid stuff and, and people have closed doors on me and that was my fault. Uh, no amount of apologies or anything would let me back into their world. So I had to let them, let them go. Um, but for you, oops, where'd it go? There we go. Yeah, if somebody has broken your trust, you're going to need to leave them in a one or a two long, long time. And then if they get those behaviors, um, you know, start start looking like they might have just been a, been a one-time thing, you can move them forward. But just remember that they aren't trustworthy, not completely. Okay. Uh, you entered CODA six years ago. How long did it take you to go through the steps? A year and a half. My sponsor dragged that out. She had a lot of homework for me, a lot of stuff. It took a year and a half, and I, I appreciate her so much. I can't tell you. She's a, an amazing, amazingly healthy person, and we went really slow and, and talked through everything and went through everything so that I understood everything. Because she knows I'm going to pass this on to other people, so I better understand what I'm talking about. And let's see. Did you say you don't cut relationships out? You just move them around from different levels. Is it safe to just close the door and detach totally? Sure, that's a one. That's a superficial relationship. No expectations, no obligations. You don't have to talk to them. You don't have to do anything. But they are a one. Everybody's a one. Everybody starts at a one. Don't forget, they might appear friendly. They might appear to be a number four right off the bat, but they aren't. They're a number one. Trust me. Okay. And I don't see anything over there. Okay. Are there any other uh, hands up? No. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Hello. Um, Okay, uh, when it comes to dating, do you suggest we start everyone on a one? Yes. How long is it appropriate? How long is an appropriate time to finally commit to another person? Well, you got to go past number two first. Start at number one and stay there for a long, 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 long time. Remember, it takes 90 days to figure out for, for you to drop your guard and for them to drop their guard. You're just dealing with their representative in the first three months. They're showing you who they want you to think they are. I did the same thing. I was an actress of pretty good caliber, I must say. But after that three month period, they're gonna start dropping their guard and show you who they really are. They're gonna say little stupid things. They're gonna kick a cat or they're gonna talk bad about their mother or they're gonna, because they're more comfortable now. They're a friend. In, in their opinion, they're probably up to a five. But you keep them at a one and, and for the longest time. And then if you feel like you want to move them to a two, go ahead. But moving them to a three is a big deal. It takes a long time. When do you um, start to get intimate with somebody as far as like, you know, making out or... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a good question. No, no, no. It's a good question. Uh, definitely wait until that. Oh, you're blushing. That is so adorable. <laughs> I know. Settle yeah. down. You start making out. You know what I mean? Like I, I generally don't go for the kill like that right off the bat. Like I wait a long time for any intimacy like that. But making out. What about making out? Yeah, that's what I same idea I had with my sex buddy. And uh, you know, if my sponsor, like my sponsor said, if you have a good idea, just do the opposite, and you should be okay. So. I had this, this idea that I was going to have a sex buddy and those relationships don't work out ever. Oh, they don't. They never, 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 never work out. Yeah, so, we were human, we have feelings. Yes, and that's why you're gonna get squashed. Yeah. So, yeah. Everybody starts at one, hun. Sorry, it took, it takes, I think it took four and a half months for me and Dave to get intimate. And, uh, and that was only when, when he had been hurt and was helpless, I attacked him. So there, you know, that's when I felt comfortable. I don't know. I can't explain that. Can but, you start making out at a level one? Uh, just kisses. That's all. Just friendly kisses. Without it. Okay. Yeah, so we, just like little pecks and whatnot. Yeah. It's because this, well, casual or superficial, imagine yourself going up and, and kissing the mailman. <laughs> just, a, just a superficial relationship. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. That's hard. Uh, when trust is broken, what's the amount of time it typically takes to rebuild? Remember that 90 days rule. I'd given another 90 days at least to see if, if that was an anomaly or if this is a pattern. As soon as you uh, drop your guard, are they, are they going to do that again? If they do, then you need to run in the opposite direction and just number one from then on. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So, let's see. There's a, did you say you don't? Oh, I'm not to reveal. Will you be doing any other workshops anywhere? I might be doing one of these again. I sent in all my stuff, so um, we'll see. Sharon, isn't forgiveness the most important when we forgive ourselves? Make a decision not to be a make the decision not to be a victim have trust with ourselves first then we have the capability to forgive others after us that's absolutely true and that's why you've got to start talking nice to yourself you just didn't know any better you'd know better now if you make a mistake now then you've got to make an amend and all that stuff oops you know we have little backslides every once in a while uh but if i didn't know any better at the time there's nothing to forgive you know but now, once you get through the coding, you don't have any excuses. <laughs> so that's kind of a bummer. Um, we are all thinking that, yeah. When there is a strained relationship between a son and a mother, perhaps no intimacy and even no years of communication for multiple years, how would you suggest navigating that? That is so sad. I, I just hate to hear things like that. But. Uh, the first thing I would do, it was, it was suggested years ago uh, with my mom was write a letter. Write him a letter. Uh, how are you doing? They don't have to do anything with that letter. Well, of course, that was when we still mailed things. You can email them or something like that. Hey, what have you been up to? Here's what's going on with me. Love to hear from you. And that's it. And see if they respond. When they are ready to have a mother again, they'll pull you in. I hope. Um, I hear women say that the man is pursing the, pursuing the woman. I'm thinking that's supposed to say it. The pursuing the, the woman. Does it make a difference who is pursuing who, man or woman? No, this works both ways. Uh, gentlemen, be careful of the woman doing the same thing I'm talking about with men. It's the exact same. So, yeah. My boyfriend is not attractive. He's not, I would not call him an attractive man and he doesn't see me as attractive either. So, huh. What attracted, that's what I said. Huh. So huh. What, <laughs> what attracted him was my personality. What attracted me was his personality. That's like it's code of heaven. That's Some right. More you know inner, I, inner things, right? Yourself. Inner. Yeah. He wasn't and how, right. how many years younger are you than your husband? 11. 11, yeah. I'm 11 years younger. Mm -hmm. We've been together for 13 years and we're just, you know, we're, until one of us dies, we're just going to be together because it's yeah. that's just 
it's fearless. That's where we are. So. Number two, please can you say a little bit about the meaning of how do they talk about their ex? How do they treat their mother? What if these people were abused, abusive and you don't have anything positive to say about them? Is this more about staying stuck, talking about them negative to, negatively over and over? or continuing with the relationship when they are clearly uh, the unhealthy ones. Yeah, this is important. This is really, really important. If they, uh, if they run down their mom, they're gonna run you down as well. This is, this is what shows you who they really are. If they uh, mistreat animals, if they kick their dog or something like that for not behaving or something, that's a big red flag and you need to get, get the heck out of there, I mean, right now. Those are the kind of people you don't wanna be around. You're not, luckily, now, after you've worked the steps, you're not going to attract those kind of people anymore, so don't worry about that as much. But you might still find these people, and when that comes up, you bolt in the opposite direction. Do they complain a lot? Oh, my boss is not correct. You know, my boss is being mean to me. How do they treat their mother? This one, uh, you know, with what she was saying, God, I can only imagine what he says about her, and that's probably pretty hurtful. But if they're talking about that, their most important female relationship in their lives, that's how they see women in general. Okay, so that's not going to be a good relationship. Um, <clears throat> Karen, thank you for today's seminar. It's been a godsend. Ah, I'm also looking for a sponsor. Would absolutely appreciate. Uh, okay, I'll reach out to you. How can codependents stop themselves from getting involved with people who need fixing? work the steps, work the steps with a sponsor in the order they're given, you will no longer be attracted to those people. You're going to see them as, oh yeah, that's, I would used to would have gone for that, but no, and they will not be attracted to you. That's going to, that's the easy way around that question. Um, you just, you'll see them right away. You'll see, see through them right away. Um, trust me on that one. That's absolutely happened for me. Uh, um, yeah, so we have about 20 minutes or 25 minutes left. I wanted to ask about like, I think a little while ago, you said something about like where they should stay if they haven't worked the steps. Um, because I know that notice a lot of people in recovery just don't work the steps. Um, and they, you know, they continually like to dump, 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 and they, they don't like to get anywhere or any relief to do it themselves. And then I like, I feel like I enable them by being their sponsor or if I help them put a bandaid over. Um, and so, um, where do you keep somebody romantic or not? Um, or do you see somebody, well, if they just don't have, um, you know, have it in them to do the steps. Like, where do you keep them? You know, yeah. Work? If they are in the meetings, but they haven't worked the steps, they're not here, they're here. In a one? Got to get somebody equal to you so that you can grow together. Not help him grow and him not help you grow, but so that you can grow together. What about a friendship? Friendship's great. Start them in a one. Yeah. If I had started every relationship I ever had at a one, I would not have had the chaos and destruction that I had all my life. If I had done that, if I had known any better, this would be a whole different world. Let's see. Uh, okay, from Simon. Huh? Oh, I was just saying, we have another hand up, but I, I guess you could go ahead with your. Okay. Uh, from Sia, sorry I meant if someone's mom was abusive. Okay. So they don't have much, if anything, positive to say about her. Uh, for example, a narcissistic mother. Uh, how could that be a red flag? What would a healthy response be from someone who was abused by a narcissistic mother? Uh, you know, if they want to ruminate with you about that, that's unhealthy. That is for uh, uh, professional counseling. It's not for bringing up in a meeting, not for bringing up with you. Uh, just a casual, yeah, you know, just didn't really have a good relationship with my mother is enough. That's all you need to know until you get to a five, perhaps. Until you get to a five, but you don't do that out of one. Uh, well, I have good news. COVID hit, and now everything's on Zoom. So you could go to any meeting you want anywhere on Zoom. 
I believe CODA.org would have that information, the Zoom um, uh, yeah. meeting schedules and things like that. So this is a perfect time for you actually, sad to say, but it might be working in your favor. <laughs> okay. okay, question, we're up for the three minutes. Uh-oh, uh, she has really screwed my mind on whether I have really loved or not. Ah as in just being obsessed or infatuated for a time or living in a fantasy about life, about what could it be like with them? What is it real love? What does it look like? No, that's not real love. That's a, a need to be needed. That's a need to be, uh, to fit in. That's a need to have somebody else want you in their life. Uh, uh, sadly, that is not uh, a healthy, and, and I believe that you've figured it out already. I don't think you need me to answer that one. Work those steps and um, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be different. And last one, Carol, the need or strong desire for closeness with family of origin has me has been for me an ongoing and unfulfilled yearning. Positive change beginning with me is my responsibility. My words and actions are getting healthier, firm boundaries, yet it's akin to upsetting the family mobile. <laughs> firm boundaries are beneficial for me and I and I thought for all, yet oops, yet not appreciated by a couple of the siblings. Sorry, it keeps jumping. Uh, stuck in the blame game. Change is slow, requires loads of patience with a focus on present and future based on learnings from the past. On my better days, I remain hopeful that in due time, we will unite, we'll unite in peace before severe, severe illness or a funeral. Now, good luck with that. Family's tricky. You already know what they're capable of. So they're gonna be, you know, like the, it sounds to me like they're gonna be a one or a two, but you go home as an adult, they can't hurt you. They can't make you feel any particular way. Nobody can make you feel anything. It's up to you to decide. Uh, let's see, sorry I did so quick on that. I understand our goal is to build healthy relationships, talking too much, being too trusting, and talking to people who don't, don't have my, do not have my best interest has been my downfall yet. Do you, do you, think it's better to stay out of relationship if they are a dysfunctional period. Of course, you work the steps and then the relationships will come to you. The people that are going to be attracted to you are going to be healthy people. But you have to wait. You know, that's, that's the bummer. It's not going to happen overnight and you just got to be patient. It took five years for me to meet Dave. Um, you know, so that's, that's what, uh, this may be too personal. Oh, goody. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, uh, understand if it is. If you and your partner didn't find each other attractive, how did that still come about? Did you start off as friends and it became deeper? Did you start off by not making it romantic? I am mostly attracted to emotionally unavailable men, but I am aware now, so I don't go further. Should I stop needing to find someone physically attractive and focus on the personality type? Yes. That is the essence of CODA. You got to find out who they are as a person, where they're at as, a, as, a, as an actual individual person. Dave and I met, uh, we had matchmaker friends that uh, kept trying to get us together. My sponsor had put me on a man band for a year and I really liked it, so I dragged it out for five years. Uh, Dave had gotten uh, separated from his wife three and a half years previous for after 39 years, the only woman he'd ever been with. So we were both real hesitant to get into a relationship. So our finagling friends arranged to have us sit side by side at a Christmas party. And we got to talking and, and he was you know, very easy to talk to. And by the end of the evening, we said, yeah, let's go out on the ski slopes tomorrow. And it very, very gradually went from number one to number two, to number three, to number four, to number five. And it took five years to make him a six, five years to where I absolutely know he would not hurt me for any reason. Okay, in my I own my own business and I have employees. In the past, I've struggled with trusting people who later betray my trust. Should employees all be at a one? Absolutely. Employees should start at one. If they become a personal friendship for you, that's different. You might want to move them up to a two, but you don't have to. If they're just employees and just superficial, they can stay at a one, and that's a good relationship. Okay. Uh, Sharon A raised a hand. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for your participation. It is 10 to 4. 
This has been an amazing workshop, Karen. Thank you so, so very much. Yeah, very um, well. And can you just share the name, the titles of your other workshops we're uh, going through and having you come back for? Yeah, the first one I did was, it's never about the thing. You know, the thing that you complain to your sponsor about, it's not about that. It's about something a little bit deeper. And then I did, it's time to stop wishing for a better past. Mm -hmm. And then I did factor crap. And then I did be yourself, everyone else is taken. <laughs> so if you want, want any one of those, I'd be happy to, happy to do it again. All right. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Karen, for coming out and, and doing this amazing interactive workshop. I, it's been amazing. Um, people are saying we want every single one of her workshops. So stay tuned. Um, thank you. Okay, so I will say a prayer for us, a closing prayer. We thank our higher power for all that we've received from this meeting. As we close, may we take with us the wisdom, love, acceptance, and hope of recovery. Keep coming back. It works if you work it, and you're worth it. <laughs>